uh, PRN. Okay, so we've started a new recording. Is that right, Steve and Mike? You guys, are, are we on with a new recording here? So we want we want to welcome you back to the Green Grassroots Emergency Election Protection Coalition call number 109, I guess it's 109B. And uh, this will be separately recorded. We're gonna start off with our host from the first, our guest from the first hour, Jim Hightower. And Jim, we hope you'll come back and, and, and periodically join us. You are, of course, a true professional and a great guest. And I want you to give my regards to Thorne Dreyer down yeah. there in Austin um, at, at his own radio show. Um, uh, but we're now gonna shift over as advertised to a discussion on nuclear power and solar energy. And we will again start with the good news that the six reactors at Zaporizhia in, in Ukraine are shut, but uh, the future of the world depends on keeping power so that they can keep them cool. You know, they were running one reactor at Zaporizhia to keep the other ones in area and the fuel pools cool. They are now uh, dependent on the central grid, whatever's left of it in, in Ukraine. And <laughs> this is, you, could, you couldn't make this stuff up, right? During <laughs> a Fukushima, when Fukushima knocked out the reactors, you literally, you have to have power all the time to a nuclear plant to keep it cool, both the cores and the spent fuel pools. And there were literally people who were, the, the operators of Fukushima were running into the parking lot. This is at a nuclear power plant with six reactors. They were running into the parking lot to take the batteries out of their cars and run them into the control room so they could get the, so they could keep the control room operating at this wonderful modern marvel of, <laughs> of, of technology. Now at Zaporizhia, they're in the same same boat. They have uh, on-site um, um, uh, diesel generators to keep the fuel pools and the cores cool, but <laughs> because they've been operating, they've been occupied by the Russians. The Russians have been taking the fuel from the diesel generators to run their tanks. And so they've been, they, on the one hand, they, you know, they gotta keep the cool, they, they, they spend fuel pools cool, or they're gonna blow down, literally blow up these nuclear plants and once again, contaminate all of Europe like Chernobyl did. And, and, then, and these guys are taking the fuel from these things of life and death diesel generators to run their, their military equipment. <laughs> so, you know, this is, and of course we have South Texas. Uh, I was at the site of Comanche Peak uh, before they they got in there with the bulldozers. So uh, South Texas is an absolute nightmare. Uh, Jim Hightower, does um, Austin still own part of South Texas or were they ever able to unload it? I, I, I'm not positive that they're not using it, uh, but uh, again, as was indicated earlier in the program, uh, you know, most of our power is actually wind power. Uh, yeah. So we Well, there is come, more come wind power. And, and increasingly will be solar. Uh, but because uh, we have a lot of sun. But Well, I'm waiting for the great day when the wind and solar industries have more money yeah. than what I call King Kong, coal, oil, mm -hmm. nukes, and gas. Mm -hmm. And so that they can buy Congress. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. <laughs> but we do, yeah. Texas is by far the number one wind producer uh, mm -hmm. in the United, wind power producer in the United States, uh, more than double Iowa, which is second. We have with us, Jim, a wonderful uh, woman, a great activist, Connie Klein. She is in Cleveland, and she's been a mainstay of the movement to shut the mm -hmm. Perry and Davis Bessie reactors, which are, and Perry, by the way, on, on Lake Erie, is no one ever thinks of this. I grew up in Columbus. The word earthquake never passed my, my mind, but uh, the Perry nuclear plant on Lake Erie is the first nuclear plant in the United States to be damaged by an earthquake. <laughs> and um, and so Connie Klein, uh, do you want to jump in and, and talk to Jim Hightower, please? Connie needs to unmute. Aaron. There you go. Connie, you're good. Hello. No, oh, just muted again. Click on the left <laughs> side of them. There we go. The, the wonders of Zoom. Go ahead. Okay. Find me unmuted. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, I, I followed your work for decades. If it's well, okay, you're, Harvey, you're I, I, I actually have a question uh, related to Texas. Um, Go for it. Okay. Um, on the national news 
maybe two weeks ago, uh, they had a story about two small school districts in central Texas um, wh where they um, where they got very right wing repugnance, as I call them, uh, elected to the school board. Mm -hmm. And um, the school board was banning books right and left. Right. Apparently, this was um, shortly after uh, school started in Texas. So I, it was about two weeks ago. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? And do you have any follow up? I I'm a retired teacher. Yeah. Do you have any follow up information on what's going on in those two? Uh, well, what's what's going on is a uh, raw censorship uh, by right wing public officials. Uh, we had a state representative from up around Fort Worth, I think, uh, who's chair of some subcommittee uh, and wrote to all the school boards in Texas. I think it was uh, uh, with with a list of books that he wanted pulled from their shelves. Uh, and uh, and some local school boards have have done it. There is, as you know, a, a right wing uh, push funded by the Koch brothers, among others, uh, to uh, to ban uh, not just the books, but also what's uh, called CRT, critical uh, what, race theory. Uh, being taught in schools because they, they're, they're saying that uh, the schools are teaching uh, kids uh, to hate uh, white people and to uh, and to uh, and that's that they're teaching that uh, replacement theory <laughs> that all these immigrants coming in are to replace white people. Uh, it's 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 the kooky version of QAnon, believe it or not, <laughs> kookier <laughs> than which you cannot believe. Uh, but there it is. Uh, and so they are not only are they banning books, uh, literally uh, with, with fomenting local people to go in and 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 take books off the shelf. Uh, but they are uh, also uh, attacking teachers, uh, almost physically attacking, maybe have physically attacked, but certainly abusively, uh, verbally uh, abused teachers and school board members. Uh, to they, they go to school boards and disrupt the whole thing and say you're uh, you're you're doing these perverse things uh, in the schools, which they are not doing. Uh, but truth doesn't matter. Uh, so that is out there. Uh, the good news is people are rebelling against that. Uh, sensible uh, people with their heads quasi screwed on are are saying no. Uh, you know, you're, you're not going to ban books. Uh, this is not Fahrenheit four five one period, uh, and you're not going to attack our teachers or our librarians uh, or our school board members. Uh, you you are not going to uh, be thugs, uh, and so there is a, a, a reaction rebellion uh, against that, uh, and so this is the fight uh, that is that is going on, uh, and uh, and has to go on uh, at a from our side from a progressive. Or I wouldn't even say progressive from a just a sane <laughs> a viewpoint uh, to begin to battle. Uh, against uh, this uh, uh, just outright repression uh, and 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 uh, push of ignorance, uh, because they're teaching kids uh, raw ignorance, uh, uh, and so you know parents are ultimately not going to stand for that uh, either. So I, I don't know the specifics in the districts you're talking about, uh, but uh, but I do know that there is a huge pushback. Uh, here in Texas uh, and in Florida and in other states uh, where, th where this is where this is being uh, pushed. Well, my understanding of critical race theory is that um, in, in it, um, a teachers actually dare to assert that black people might not have enjoyed slavery. Yes, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So no, and the, 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 I mean, it, Lily Tomlin said, no matter how cynical you get, it's almost impossible to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and that is the case uh, with with these kooks. And we, we need to just say it for what it is. They are just kooks. Yes, absolutely. And then there's a great quote uh, that people who begin by burning books uh, inevitably end by burning people. 
Mm -hmm. um, um, Connie, did you want to add anything in before I go to my reason? We are going to switch over, segue over to the nuclear issue as, as um, uh, advertised Myla. Myla is a great activist, Jim, in Southern yeah. California. Uh, with Marvelous. Long history. Terrific human being. Uh, go ahead, Myla. Hey, Jim, so great to have you here. I just wanted to fill you in. It's my understanding <clears throat> that uh, the city of Austin actually became a uh, investor in the South Texas nuclear plant in, in a move that a lot of people were not aware of. And it was yes. very unpopular. And the, um, the, the municipal government voted to divest yeah. from, that, from that ownership stake, but they haven't been able to find a buyer. Yeah, <laughs> so know, maybe, uh, maybe they should go door to door or something. You know, want want, want, want a little nuclear? Sale. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Some time has passed, uh, and they have not been able to find a buyer. So the yes. city no. of Austin still does have an ownership in that nuclear power plant. Right. Similarly, here in Los Angeles, many people who live here are unaware of the fact that the city of Los Angeles and the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power own a have an ownership stake in a nuclear nuclear power plant in Arizona, the Palo Verde nuclear power plant, mm. which evaporates 27,000 gallons of water every minute of every day to keep those reactors from mm. blowing up. So well, um, we've been trying to get the city to divest, but even if yeah. the city council votes to divest, who will buy that interest so well look, luckily you're rich in water in california so you don't have to worry about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. splurging yeah. splurging it you know there's a movement and i'll just be very brief with this and uh, get out of your way but uh, uh there's there's a wonderful new movement called rights of nature uh and right. it is spreading it's all over the world but it's spreading here in the united states and the most unexpected of places like toledo ohio has become a leader uh, in the rights of nature. And what this is, it says instead of uh, in, instead of environmental regulation and requiring bureaucrats to protect us, that nature itself has legal rights to go into court just as a person does, that nature can hire a lawyer and go into court and represent it and say that this river, uh, this forest has a right to exist and to thrive. Uh, and that is being spread all across the country. One one big victory was over in um, Orlando, uh, Florida, uh, in Orange County, uh, Florida, uh, where po pollution was just uh, e eating up their waterways uh, over there, uh, which is a big economic factor as well as a resource factor. Uh, and uh, and so th this group put together uh, a an initiative on the ballot uh, in the county of Orlando, uh, in the county of Orange, uh, which is Orlando and Disney World and all that stuff, uh, and uh, and even the supporters of it uh, who were, were be beginning this movement assumed, well, this is going to require an educational process, so we're not going to win the first time out. They got eighty nine percent of the vote <laughs> of the people in Orange County, Florida, to vote for nature having its own rights. Uh, and being able to protect itself uh, with lawyers. This is a huge change uh, in, in, in environmental law uh, that is legal <laughs> uh, and that is now beginning to spread all across the country. So I hope you'll give a little focus on that a little on Jim, down the road too. We have Wendy Lederman here from Florida. Wendy. She's oh. popped herself into the chat and wants Good. to talk about that specifically <laughs> thank okay. you so much well, I, um yeah i was um asked to come in thank you so much for bringing that up jim thanks for everything yeah i um we've had chuck o'neill on the call with us i'm a friend of mine i work we, we now have um the rights of the florida uh right to clean and healthy water ballot initiative yes. what happened yeah like what happened to follow up on this and maybe this is something that you could follow up on in, in your own networks because um as soon as that was passed by 89 percent um, DeSantis made some preemptive legislation. Right. He's the king of preemption um, that specifically disallowed rights of nature ordinances. So um, there is actually a court case where um, Chuck took a, a development um, permit to court um, defending uh, Lake Mary and the surrounding wetlands and the judge struck it down because of this preemption. Mm. So right now he's, um, I think he's going to appeal it, but definitely everyone should be following that case and, um, and really 
just getting a hold and changing the shift, shifting the paradigm mm -hmm. about rights of nature. It's these conversations that talk about it, but the ballot amendments mm -hmm. are just so pow powerful because a state ballot amendment, which is like we're doing for the right to clean and healthy water now, which um, allows the state legislature to be sued. They can be held liable for any municipalities that are, are, are polluting, but mm -hmm. those ballot amendments are so powerful because they, um, they preempt any kind of legislation and it's yeah. truly the rights mm -hmm. of the people. So I just really appreciate you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Follow Chuck O'Neill and the Rights of Nature Movement in Florida and everywhere else. Thank you so much. People power. One more guy I want you to uh, say hi to real quick. Alan Minsky has jumped on. Alan is the, and thank you for that, Wendy. Uh, Alan is the executive uh, director of the uh, Progressive yeah. Democrats of America. Oh, yeah. um, uh, who was uh, a part of our yeah. uh, our hosting here? Thank you. Uh, I apologize and, for being an hour late. Every every Monday at five p.m. Eastern, I'm on a nationally syndicated radio show for an hour, and so I have to pop over here late. But it's great to see you, Jim Hightower. I know you were friends with uh, you know Tim Carpenter and, right. and Steve Cobble, uh, and uh, we're continuing on with their work. And uh, wonderful. I, I, can I ask you just one question? Um, because this is the day is the last day where there's a significant primary in the country over in Rhode Island. We're supporting a progressive candidate, David Siegel, there. Right. Um, and so it's the day where we we always sort of shift. And now we are supporting all of the Democrats, especially on the federal elections, to try to hold on to the majority in the House and in the Senate. And of course, we, we don't in any way compromise our progressive values. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on a sort of a message to core PDAers. You are so iconic among our membership what it would be in the importance of having the Democrats, even where you have really sort of weak, milk toast, moderate Democrats, the importance of having them get elected and hold on to the majority in the House as we as we shift to that. Well, it's 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 the competition is, is the essence of political change. Uh, and if and if you don't even have any alternative to Republicans, uh, then you're going to have Republicans. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Uh, so, you know, in, any any little Democratic seed that can be planted, uh, I was thinking of one woman, I believe, in uh, Louisiana who's, who was part, part of an uh, a, uh, environmental justice movement fighting polluters uh, along the Mississippi River. Uh, and... Uh, and was being they were being attacked by the by the right wing Republicans and the the industry and et cetera, and she said they tried to bury us, but they didn't know that we're seeds, <laughs> so they're trying to bury seeds, you know, and so that that's that's what that's what any kind of a quasi progressive uh, effort uh, would be uh, in any community. It, it it at least you're at least there. And that mm -hmm. has been a problem of our Democratic Party, by the way, as you know well, is mm -hmm. that there are too many counties that have, uh, I think it's 47 of the counties in Texas. Uh, we have 254 counties, so we've got a lot, but 47 of them have no Democratic Party at all, no Democratic presence. So there's there's nobody even waving the flag, you know, at a parade, you know, mm -hmm. or so there's no sense that there, that there's another way to go. Uh, so so being there, as I think Woody Allen said, is, uh, you know, 80 percent of the fight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, it's great to see you. And maybe see right, you. maybe sometime in the next few months, we'll bring you on a national call with PDA. Or be Terrific. Honor. Sounds good. Thanks. Jim, we want to thank you for uh, for being with us. Uh, My pleasure. I want you to come back, if you will. Uh, we uh, And, um, you know, we're uh, it, it, you, you've just been a great voice. Uh, for sanity and for all the great things that we need to have happen and there you are right in the belly of the beast in texas so uh, uh, uh keep on keep on fighting thank you Put all your uh, links in the chat i will be sending you my history of the united states and okay. uh, i will send forward your letter to prn uh, where this this right. first hour will uh, air right. at five o'clock on thursday okay. okay thank you thank you man and thank you uh, melody and and we're going to Proceed now with nuclear power, and particularly, especially in California, with solar. And uh, what we have now is a an attempt in California not only to prolong operations at the Abo Canyon, but also to kill solar energy in in California with a roof attacks on rooftop solar. And I want to call on Ron Leonard. Um, uh, to begin with, because Ron is the great expert, but we have over 1.2 million rooftops in California with solar panels. 
And what, the, what they're proposing to do here is to put a, 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 a tax on, on these rooftop panels that have already been installed. Uh, my, my daughter and son-in-law around the corner have had uh, solar panels for years, and all of a sudden they want to slap a tax on it. And they also want to cut the amount of money that the um, uh, utility pays for the electricity that's coming from those panels. Now, I'm not going to characterize their article or arguments, but I will say that um, uh, we know that the, the rooftop solar is now a very significant part of the energy mix in California, as are the batteries that are in people's basements. And these are stabilizing the grid in California in a way that nuclear power could never do. So, uh, uh, Ron Leonard, uh, do you want to, and then Tatanka Bricka, uh, um, Tatanka, you look, uh, COVID agrees with you. you. You look like you lost a lot of weight. <laughs> uh, uh, Ron Leonard and then, and, and then Tatanka, let's explain what's going on here in California because it is a nightmare. Uh, go ahead, Ron Leonard. It, it's a hoot. And the hoot is that solar last week literally saved the grid twice. And they did that by enabling 500 megawatts of rooftop solar combined to get on the grid when the grid needed it and propped up the entire grid. And this goes back to basically uh, a mistake. Well, Harvey, you made a mistake. You, you, Harvey sometimes gets excited and takes <laughs> horribly and goes overboard. It's not 1.2 million roofs, 1.5 million roofs. 1.5 million groups of basically 10 gigawatts worth of power that people in California have paid for out of their own pocket, put on their own roof, and is now being used if they happen to have a battery to prop up the grid for free. Oh my God, what a gift that we're giving to people. What a gift that solar is to people, uh, to all ratepayers in the grid. And my friend Carl Robago actually did an analysis of the entire California grid and what rooftop solar does for the California grid. And it's a, a $207 million gift every year. So this, this is really a significant thing that we, we have as a resource that we can call upon at any time and fix things instantly. And this will give you a good example of the good guys, the guys with the solar roof, and the sort of incompetent guys that are running the grid. The guys that are running the grid have batteries available to them. And the batteries can be used to do the same thing that the solar guys did to sort of prop up the grid when it's about to fail. So what did the, uh, the administrators of the grid do with those batteries? Well, they follow the law exactly. The law says that when the grid price reaches a dollar, a dollar is a you froze. You froze, Ron. Ron, you're, you're frozen there. It's like uh, something out of a Batman movie. Okay, go ahead. And functionally, when that dollar is reached, they deplete those batteries. Rather than waiting for when the grid fails at 7, 10 at night to call on those batteries to haul up the power and stabilize the grid so people's lights don't go out. So they can't keep the damn lights on. This is what we're faced with, incompetence, the utility greed to wipe out 10 gigawatts worth of power and the excessive amounts of power that is being used now when, I don't know, Cupertino reaches 102 degrees. 54 gigawatts worth of power is being sucked out of that grid instantaneously when those outrageous global warming temperatures hit us, not a good thing. Thank you for that, Ron. And of course, the PUC um, does not want to acknowledge the importance of, of, of rooftop solar in sustaining the grid. That's the last thing they want to do because the utilities don't own that capacity. We do, the people own it. And um, if, if rooftop solar continues to spread, which we hope it will, um, uh, then uh, we don't need the utilities. Now, this is not an abstract discussion as early as Thursday of this week, that's two days after tomorrow, the CPUC may take up an agenda item to impose this tax. Uh, Tatanka, do we know about this? 
specifically in California? Yeah, there are environmental groups are pummeling. Uh, there's a great um, phone campaign going on, not just to get stuff to Newsom, but to get the electeds or your local electeds involved in this issue. There are hundreds and hundreds of calls going out every day from Indivisible, from different environmental groups, even from some labor groups. And so we need to continue this. Now, what Newsom did is right after, you know, uh, coming out for the solar tax and for the revival of uh, our nuclear power plant, got so pummeled that, of course, he got involved with CARB, with the California Air Resources Board, which has tremendous power here. And they they uh, they said, OK, we've, we've updated even a little bit more our scoping plan. And, you know, they moved back from 2035 to 2030, a timeline to push for 90 percent to be there. They pushed the, uh, three or four really progressive things. I mean, basically, he's responding out. Know, finger in the air, responding <laughs> as much as as we respond, he responds in some way. Now, of course, he's decided to run for president. And he's decided to run on on uh, oil and gas money, okay, which we probably shouldn't be surprised at all. And this is the, the big Davos reset uh, kind of Biden plan. You know, we're going to get to carbon zero maybe by 2050, by which time everything is too late. So as I've said before, the big push is the, the decentralized, more pro-democratic de distributed energy on rooftop solar versus the model where you can have big solar farms and you can continue the utilities, which are threatened with being put out of existence and should be, uh, can continue to meter the sun and meter the wind. So um, I really appreciated Jim Hightower because he, he very clearly shows what we're up against and says, we just don't stop. Now, one of the things we don't stop doing that Romero has been working on starting over two years ago and now you know working on more legislation for 23 and 24, understanding that the the alliances we built between labor and environmental environmental justice have really started to bear fruit we also need this uh conversation about the rights of nature about the ethical dimension of the climate change itself of a of a large broad-based inter interfaith group this coalition that has to happen along with it but we have been building out of Romero a progressive cabinet in waiting, and we want to be prepared the day after the November elections, which is when they start talking about 2020 candidates, to have a list of potential progressive candidates for president. We can't just leave this up to chance. So anyway, more about that in a future program. I think it's really important. Uh, taking our cues, learning everything the Progressive Caucus is doing on all these positions to see if we can even, you know, make allies there, come up with better things and have suggestions. And there will be some people like Buttigieg maybe should stay with, with education, find, find exactly what Bernie wants to do, you know, if we're going to draft, uh, well, I mean, there's all kinds of choices. But Well, Tatanka, what can we do this week? Can you put you, contact yeah, I, in the chat? To, uh, um, so that we can, people can call the CPUC and call the electeds and, and make sure that this tax gets killed. Yeah, yeah, we can put, uh, uh, and, and uh, Bennett may be wanting to talk about that. Uh, we can put in the chat how to call, um, how to call Newsom and also how to, you know, where the show up places will be where people can physically be president, present or present uh, via Zoom. Really, really important. Really important. Okay. Uh, Ace Hoffman, you're on. I, I just wanted you, if you would, to put the link to your uh, cartoon again. It's a one minute clip that everybody should see. We showed it, I think, last week, but I want to show it again, if you don't mind. If you can slip it into the chat, Steve Caruso can pick it up and we can we can show it. A mile of reason and then Danette, but we got to focus on what we can do this week 
to uh, for action. So right. Amara and then Danette, go ahead. Right. You know, uh, since uh, that horrible legislation passed uh, in the dead of the night, uh, extending the license of Diablo, I've been on the phone talking to various um, uh, state legislator staff in, in the state of California. And what I keep hearing is that um, rooftop solar is seen as a threat to uh, organized labor. And I guess that's primarily the 1400 workers at, um, at Diablo. And um, I, so I have, a, I have a two part question. What are the prospects? Is anybody working on organizing uh, people who work in the rooftop solar sector? Because I think that that would really be key to, um, to um, uh, at, at least changing the narrative uh, because the, the legislators, you know, the democratic legislators who voted to extend the license um, are hiding behind organized labor. They're saying they're listening to organized labor and that's why um, they're doing what they're doing. And then two part, and Ron, thank you for being uh, willing to respond to that. You said that there are 100 uh, or 1 1.5 uh, million solar panels or houses with rooftop solar. What's the potential in the state of California? How many houses could have rooftop solar and how much energy could be, what's the potential for the future of rooftop Myla, solar? Myla, before we get to that, people in the chat are demanding specific action items. So before we run out of time, let's get to the action items and circle well, back to the- that, That's potential. a good one. Uh, we, we, Myla and, and I have raised that issue before. We need to be organizing uh, the solar industry. Uh, it's a mystery to me. We have 1,500 uh, workers at Diablo and 70,000 in the solar industry. Why is, why is the labor movement supporting Diablo and not rooftop solar? So, so can I respond to no that? Can uh, I okay. respond? Okay. No. Thank you for that, Mike. I, I, and thank you, Myla. Let's go to Danette. John Steiner, are you raising your hand or were you just stretching? You're stretching. Okay. All right. Okay. So am I Danette, at... And then Ron and then Satanic. Okay. Thank you. Actionable items. Um, please um, sign up with um, Solar Alliance. I will put the um, link in the chat. Uh, they have great updates as to when the CPUC meetings are. We've been fighting this since last year. I've personally been attending the meeting since late January when they were supposed to vote on this tax, solar rooftop solar tax. Uh, the public outcry has delayed their vote, so it works. But we need everyone to do this. We can't do it alone. Um, we can't let them rob consumers. Uh, PG&E has gotten a free pass. They've gotten away with like murder, literally murder, and destroying people's property and land and trees that we need desperately now because of the climate crisis. And we can't keep uh, letting the CPUC give them a free pass. This is uh, not acceptable. Um, we are in the sixth mass extinction right now. Uh, we don't have time for incre incrementalism because we are already at 1.3 Celsius. Um, uh, global temperature increase. We are going to start seeing uh, the dominoes start falling. We're going to get into feedback loops, which are irreversible. Uh, this is a mass extinction event. I don't think people are truly getting that. We are not going to survive if we don't stop burning fossil fuel. That's, that's, I'm just going to say it plain and simple right now. Everyone needs to wake the fuck up. Excuse my French. Sorry, I know we're recording. You have to wake up. Okay because there, there is no more time to waste. So that's why I get mad at these incremental uh, corporate Democrats who say, well, you know, just take the bill. The bill's great. I, the, we, we, the Dems actually got something passed. No, that's not acceptable. That there are too many poison pills within that bill that will destroy our environment and we will follow suit. We will not survive this. I don't know. So I, want, I, I want to emphasize, as we did, Danette, and your excellent um, Zoom call, that this is not a done deal at Diablo. There are a lot of different things, ways that we can stop them along the way. We need yep. a roadmap with all the off ramps uh, to to stop them uh, from extending yeah. Diablo. But in the meantime, the first order of business is to stop this ridiculous rooftop tax 
do we know, Ron or Tatanka or Danette, <clears throat> if they're planning to vote on the rooftop tax on, on Thursday at their PUC meeting? Uh, Ron, do you know? Or, or Tatanka? Yeah, I don't think they're planning to vote, but we can't take anything for granted. They will maybe make a suggestion. They've said they're going to have another public hearing in December, but we'll we'll see. We can't take anything for granted. The 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 Solar Alliance is the group uh, that that Danette put in there to stay in touch with. They're they're on top of this. I want to say about the labor thing, it's it's a little bit more um, nuanced going on here because in all the bills that we were working on, they went IBEW, which is really key. Those are the engineers. Those are the ones that are the nuclear workers. Those are the ones that are working in fracking and oil and the ones that are concerned about the future of their jobs. We've been having discussions with them for over three years. They very much understand that the future and the well-paying jobs in the future are in the solar and wind industry. And they want to be a part of that, okay? So they went from being opposed to most of the initiatives we were supporting to being neutral to coming out in support of them. And that's when State Senator John Laird just whipped his head around and said, well, that's a first. Never seen that in decades in the state of California, having IBEW working with environmental justice and environmental groups. But they're at the state labor convention. I don't want to take the time to go in it now because we can talk about it. The state labor convention, there was kind of a little coup. This is when, when uh, the governor came out, when Newsom came out um, on the on the pro nuclear thing, and they they made a, a deal to to disallow S, uh, SEIU votes from counting. Had a very close election, and they did not support. Uh, they, they didn't come out opposed. They didn't come out the position we want. They didn't you know, take on, they kind of stayed neutral. And it was all around the, the teachers union, you know, uh, uh, having an agreement that 40% of all new legislation is going to go to help the teachers union. And the Proposition 30 that we get to vote on, it's another thing, I, I think we need to get Denny Zane, I can invite Denny to come on this program to explain this. This is the thing that's going to get billions of dollars every year. It's a wealth tax on people 2 million and above, a 1.7% of that part above 2 million a year. And it raises billions of dollars for the next 40 years for all the changes we need to see. So it's, it's nuanced. Um, and labor is being, yes, they are uh, still part of a problem in a way, but they understand that the future is with us and where we want to go. Okay. Right. So I'd love to have part of that a discussion a little bit. It's new. Well, on the next uh, Zoom call yesterday, there was a guy, Igor, uh, who mentioned um, a, a number of other labor groups that are involved with solar. Ron, are you, uh, uh, from Ron Williams and Ron Leonard? And then we'll go to Alex Williams. Uh, Ron, are you familiar with some labor groups that are in the uh, solar installation business that could help us with this? Well, uh, let's, let's give the governor his due because he tried to sneak in a $65 uh, solar tax in this new Diablo cannon, cannon authorization bill uh, and everyone went nuts. But the issue of uh, labor costs is actually a non-issue because to get the federal investment tax credit and even the accelerated depreciation, you have to either use prevailing wage or union labor. That's the law. It exists. It's There's no going around it. That's what you have to do. And it's a non-issue. They're trying to divide and conquer. Well, that won't work. That That's just another, uh, as we, we use legal terms, BS uh, in terms of politics. And we know that worldwide, as of this month, there are more renewable energy jobs than oil and gas jobs worldwide. This is a big change. The change is not just a matter of when, it's a matter of how soon. Right, and there are more people working in solar in California alone than there exactly. are in the entire United States in the coal industry. Exactly. So, you know, that clearly, 
Uh, you know, we're, we're up against a bunch of corporate Luddites here. What, what's going on in addition to the electrical workers, SEIU and Santa Cruz made climate change a negotiating, one of the regular <clears throat> negotiating issues with the city. They were the first SEIU group to do it. These are the service employers that saying the fires and everything related to climate change is already affecting our work. This is not an add-on. This is to be a part of regularly negotiated that climate change is an issue, just like wages and things like that. There's a movement of SEIU going on. There's a, there's a lot of labor that have consciousness now and is working with environmentalists and working with the EJ, EJ community. So I don't wanna paint them as just the bad guys. As Ron says, there's a divide and conquer scheme going on by big money now, and it's gonna to continue to go on. So let's just not buy into that and let's just keep organizing. Okay. Let's discuss this vote. This vote is sort of fairly important because what I'm hearing, and I don't know if this is true, and Harvey, you need to call uh, Calcia to confirm this, but what I'm hearing is they're going to put in a revised wording of the solar tax this time right. and vote on it. And when they put the revised wording in and vote on it, they're going to kick it to November. Now, what possible other thing would be happening in November that would distract people from paying attention to this very critical vote on a solar tax in California? I wonder. Uh, there is a plan in place. You're saying that the CPUC at Thursday's meeting on the 15th is going to kick the vote on the solar tax to November? They're going to put a revised wording in there and the vote happens in November. That's what I'm the, hearing. This, was the essence, this is with the essence of what the Solar Alliance put that I, I sent to you, Ron. That's that's their assessment of what might possibly happen to either November or December. So we just have to keep up the phone calls going. All right, you guys. We need to stop attention. the vote. That's what we yes. need. So we do need to be calling the CPUC. Uh, I see that um, uh, Danette has put the uh, their number and a passcode in there to call them and uh, and tell them no, no solar tax. Uh, there was also a request um, 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 Danette, if you have the link to your meeting to put in the chat, that would be great. I put it in as well. I'll put it in again. Okay, great. Alex Williams and then Justin. And Ace, I wonder if you have the link to your video. I'd like to show it one more time. The, uh, the, the Enough is Enough video. Steve, uh, uh, um, uh, if you can pick up on it. Uh, uh, there it is. Okay. Ace put this link in. Let's talk to Alex and Justin and I want to show this Diablo link again. Uh, Alex, go ahead, and then Justin. You, you wanna show the video first and then I say something? Well, the, 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 the video is about Diablo. Oh. You wanna talk about solar? I, I, it, well, I just, my thing was, uh, I'm here in Rockville, Maryland. And what I'm saying now, what would, uh, you know, if we had a magic wand, what would it look like? In other words, what would we have to be able to do as far as transitioning to off of fossil fuel? Would we stop using fossil fuel like tomorrow or within two years, five years, 10? I mean, what would it? Well, first we shut the nuclear plants. <laughs> because any nuclear power plant can blow up. And if you wanna, you wanna get an idea of what could happen if a nuclear plant blows up in the United States, take a box, of 1,004 square miles, which is the dead zone around Chernobyl, and put it anywhere you want on the United map of the United States. You can start with LA County, which has a mere 10 million people in it. But that, so we shut the nuclear plants, and then we phase out the fossil fuels as fast as we possibly can with um, a rooftop solar. Here is Ace Hoffman's one minute video. I wanted to show it again, go ahead. Please. While we're waiting for that video, I'm going to drop a link in where people can donate to support. Poisonous cloud from any meltdown event at Diablo Canyon 
can drift for hundreds of miles in highly radioactive concentrations. So yeah, we, we really need uh, people to pitch in and support the uh, Greet Zooms. Uh, we had Jim Hightower on. We're going to have Keith Ellison on next week. We're going to have Judith Whitmer from Nevada on in a couple weeks. We're going to have Jamie Raskin coming on next month. Please uh, use that link to donate $5, $10, whatever you can spare. Enough is enough. Nearly $13 billion. Your homeowner's insurance specifically hey, yeah. excludes a nuclear accident. Renewable energy can replace all of Diablo Canyon's energy with reliable reserves and at a far lower cost. And the safety of renewables is incomparable. Contact mothersforpeace.org for more information. Okay, so... Um, uh, Thank you for that pitch, Mike. If people want to pitch in uh, uh, for financial support, that's great. The link is in the chat. Uh, the the video that uh, you I I am encouraging people, anybody who can, to spread that video around. Uh, it's really powerful. Ace did a beautiful job on it. The I've, I've had people complain that the audio didn't work, but the audio is not. Um, uh, I guess it's hit or miss, but the audio is not critical to it. Thank you for uh, Myla for jumping in to read. Uh, what it said. So, um, um, Alex Williams, you know, you asked what we need to do, as the, we see in the video, uh, the, the radioactive clouds from Diablo uh, could, could wipe out California forever, and Diablo is upwind from the rest of the country. We have 92 reactors in the U.S. They are the number one threat. There are 400 worldwide. There are 50 in Ukra 15 in Ukraine. They are the number one threat to the future of the human race. If anybody uh, asks you why uh, why we don't use nuclear power to fight global warming, small detail: the reactor, the core of the reactor in a nuclear power plant, burns at 571 degrees Fahrenheit. How do you cool a planet with 400 radioactive fires burning at 571 degrees Fahrenheit? I don't think it happens that way. So I okay, did, a did a calculation on the kilowatts produced by all the nuclear plants around the world and it to the value you know billions and billions and billions of the weight of the atmosphere it's like one thousandths of that almost one thousandths of that heat so the nuclear plants on this planet are increasing by one btu one thousandths of the, the heat in the atmosphere yes so uh -huh. there we go i have an answer for alex so well, do i is, go ahead Okay, uh, Justin, and then uh, then Ron and Tatanka. Justin, LeBlanc. Uh, I'm willing to, to wait my turn for the other two. Um, okay, Ron and Justin and Tatanka, did you want to keep going here? Because this sure. is critical. With th with, this will make a huge difference if we can stop this solar tax, which, by the way, was vetoed in Florida by Ron DeSantis. So we now have the liberal governor so-called liberal governor of California, pushing a solar tax that was killed by Ron DeSantis. You know, God almighty. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Ron Leonard, then to talk again. So the- Anybody else want to jump in, please do. The answer is simply to stop the steal and uh, har hardly borrowing that phrase. Uh, that means that one day last week, the utilities spent $450 million uh, using energy from fossil fuel that they didn't really need to do in California. And uh, if you look in the chat, you'll see that laid out. And also under Perez, we know how to do 100% renewable energy grid right now. Uh, Dr. Perez and his son, Mark Perez, have figured out how to do this. They started, studied the largest grid in the United States, the MISO, detailed uh, the method of doing it, and it turns out to be cheaper, faster, and easier. So the problem is not what or why, it's how soon. And unless we start now, we're gonna see utilities spending $450 million in a single day with fossil fuels killing us all and having the grid be vulnerable to global warming. That's crazy. We know how to do this, we're better than that. Right, and we have very substantial capacity already with uh, renewables in California. Uh, next to come after, Oh, one, one detail, by the way, 
when you're advocating for rooftop solar, we also want solar panels, floating solar panels on the aqueduct. Now this sounds a little wacky in some ways, but it's floating solar panels are, are a major reality now in China. And it's counterintuitive, but solar panels, photovoltaics work better when they're cool. That's why Colorado is so perfect for solar because you have 300 days of sun and you have a lot of winter, what used to be cold, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, the ideal situation, solar panels, uh, floating solar panels on the aqueduct and on um, um, uh, reservoirs uh, not only are cooler and more efficient and don't require power lines because you can run a power line straight down uh, the aqueduct and, until you reach, you know, a major a switching station. Uh, but the, the, the pay, they uh, prevent uh, evaporation. And so in a situation where we're having a major water crisis, you can cut evaporation off the aqueduct and off our reservoirs by 50%. It's a big deal. So uh, this, this is another piece of our advocacy to Tonka and then Wendy. Well, to Alex's question, it's possible and what we're uh, with the Romero Institute, with the Dolores Huerta Foundation, and with the increasing involvement of the Pachamama Alliance and others, along with a, a, a coalition of over 150 groups now, including labor and EJ Community Environmental, we are pushing to go in California to carbon zero by 2030. It's possible. Now, and along the way, there are technologies that aren't even in the loop yet, alternative to lithium batteries, for instance, there are alternatives to these things, much more eco-friendly solutions. And so all that also needs to be built in. Um, so anyway, it's not just the electrification of California, it includes regenerative agriculture, it includes existing buildings with, with the best, uh, uh, um, Oh God, my language is not efficiency. at 100%. Anyway, with the efficiency standards in, in addition to um, the use of uh, the non-fossil fuels, it includes the whole rest of the transportation system. It includes public banking. There's a number of things over the next two years that are included to be in that. And the goal is to have California lead the way because we have a two thirds democratic state here, get it done. And then to uh, partner with every other state and some of the states are beyond us. The state of Washington is doing a great job, et cetera. So that's the timeline. We want it within less than 10 years now. And uh, Danette is right. This is, I mean, some people think it's the 12th extinction. That's another whole discussion. Not the sixth. It's a whole discussion about what human beings have been for the last three or four billion years on this earth. But we really are in the midst of the effect of all of this right now. And so th the time is gone for just talking about it. The time for action is here and it needs to be a part of the national progressive agenda. Uh, absolutely, Wendy, we're almost out of time actually. Boy, this, this one flew by. Again, we wanna emphasize direct action, calling the, uh, the CPUC, uh, calling the electeds, calling the governor, demanding no solar tax. It's ridiculous, no solar tax. Wendy and then Justin. Thank you. I'll try to be real quick. Um, yeah, I called um Newsom from Florida and I was like, hey, if if uh DeSantis can can save solar, then so can you. So if people are outside of California, they can also have that influence. Cause you know, they then they feel like their ego and their image is being watched. Um, but that is one thing with DeSantis, it's like he'll do one thing in in one hand while the other hand, it's like you gotta watch that because they have the public service commission where they're making all the rules and like all the ballot initiatives. Now you have what just came out with um the dark money funding, the the journalists and the the, the candidates and, and all these horrible things. So it's this monopoly, it's the power structure that's really fascism. That is like the overall arching picture of like these these companies have way, way, way too much power over these vital utilities that there should at least be fair competition in the market if not, they're not going to be public. But um, but holding them accountable is going to be a huge, huge thing. So thanks. I want to make sure Justin gets a chance to talk to you. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Justin, um, um, Connie had a question. Uh, were you the guy who spoke on the uh, Diablo thing about uh, upgraded transmission and non-lithium batteries? Yes. Okay, uh, Connie and Justin, we have a shit up here if you want to get in touch with each other. <laughs> Go ahead, Justin. Be happy to, yeah. I, 
the more the merrier getting information out helps us actually act on it. So uh, anyway, uh, besides the non-lithium batteries that Tatanka mentioned, uh, there's another thing to consider and that is municipal utilities. That uh, both in Los Angeles, uh, in, uh, sorry, in um, Anaheim, uh, they formed a municipal utility and in a town uh, just north of me in the Salinas Valley called Gonzales, they uh, started a municipal utility. Why is this really important? Well, this gets back to the grassroots organizing of activities. Uh, Tatanka is probably too humble to share, but a story that happened in this area is uh, a famous organizer, uh, along with Romero Institute, got out and organized the people for an, a fracking ban in Monterey County. They were outspent 8 million to 200,000, so 400 to one, and they still won against all the oil corporations. But as part of that conversation, there ended up being a discussion of how will we manage our grid? And so Gonzalez formed a municipal utility to supply the food processors in the area. And how did they do it? Instead of building a natural gas peaker plant, they built a huge battery bank. And you know there will be uh, new technologies that will render even lithium obsolete, but this is how we do these kinds of things. And we work together both with uh, the local coalitions going door to door, door knocking, as we've heard from Andrea Miller and so many others, how effective that is. And we also actually get the corporations to act in their own best interest because they want reliable supply. In this area, literally, they are building windmills not for economic benefit, but just to keep their operations open. They need to pump water with the windmills. And right now, the utilities won't let them share with their neighbors. So that's why we need the municipal utilities to break the back of those utilities and their uh, control of the, the grid. The in Good. Silicon Can Valley, we have the city of Palo Alto, the city of Santa Clara. There are several cities that own their own utilities and have been doing solar for decades. Uh, we, as long as the first through, so we'll, we're going to go over about uh, uh, 10 minutes of uh, Bruce Strauss. Uh, if that's all right with you. Uh, 10 oh, minutes. no problem. You got a chair okay, floating great. off your left shoulder every once in a while. It kind of looks like Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse or something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Pee -wee's, Pee Wee just left, so. Uh, okay, Myla and then Ruth. Um, uh, but again, we next week, by the way, we'll have Keith Ellison, and uh, the Attorney General of, um, of Minnesota. Um, and uh, in, on September 25th, which is a Sunday, we're going to have a fundraiser with Marion Williamson, uh, which will be separate uh, for the Zoom from the Zoom call, but we'll work through that. Uh, but in the meantime, um, uh, uh, next week, Keith Ellison, please do join us. Uh, we had 150 people on today's call. Uh, Jim Hightower, the big draw, and we're glad to have him. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, okay, uh, Myla and um, then Ruth. I, I just can't stress enough to everybody that um, we want everyone around the country to get in the fight with respect to this uh, horrible idea of extending the license of, of Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. The, the rickety old decrepit plant. Um, it's a test, you know. If the if the nuclear industry in the in the world and in this country would like nothing better than to keep these plants running, and uh, it's a, it's crunch time, and we need everybody's support. And and uh, wherever you are, please call all of your electeds and uh, and make sure that people know that you cannot hobble rooftop solar. Um, and you cannot hobble because yeah, there are actually provisions in this bill that passed, Senate Bill 846, that specifically says that they want to eliminate uh, the barriers of uh, renewables. And while they're on the one hand saying that they want to, uh, to remove those barriers, we've got the CPUC considering a tax on rooftop solar, which would in fact hobble uh, a significant clean uh, energy source. So please, everybody, do what you can. Get involved. Stay, stay tuned. Stick with us. Uh, we can win this. As Hightower pointed out, it just takes work and organizing, and um, and we've got our work cut out for us. So that's all. And thank you for the opportunity to put in another two cents or so. Thank you, uh, Myla. Again, people call the CPUC. 
um, and and tell him uh, you know uh, that killed us. A uh, Ruth and then Danette, I think we're pretty much done. If anybody else wants to chime in, now's the time to raise your hand. Go ahead, Ruth, please. Hey, Harvey, I hate to put you on the spot, but I sent you an email and I think it, uh, like I said, you're drinking out of a fire hose, so you probably didn't. Would you be willing to go on Larry Mantle on KPCC? Because um, he has a large audience and I kind of thought of that and uh, Myla said, go ahead and work on it. But uh, before I work on it, would you consider that? Of course. You know. Okay. Done. Um, uh, um, uh, just let me know. We can talk. Okay. Okay. I just right. want to um, welcome Takuru uh, on the phone, uh, on the call. She's a great activist, been doing a lot of really great uh, work against uh, nuclear power uh, um, and has wonderful gatherings here in LA. So, um, so you want me to email you or call you or what? Email me. Yes. Okay. Please. Bye. Okay. Um, uh, Danette uh, and then John Steiner. Go ahead, Danette. Hello, um, I wanted to share my screen really quick. This is what, um, oh, I can't remember who said this about the uh, green energy basically saving us uh, on our heat, our, our big heat uh, spell that we've had for the last three weeks. Let me show yes, you that. Yes, it has, it has um, the, the oh. solar capacity and the battery capacity in yeah. California Look at this. Look has at this. saved us from blackouts. Look at this. This is crazy. I mean, why would anyone in their right mind be against green energy at this point? Is beyond because they're mind. utility companies. Yep. And they no. know that if, uh, if that green energy comes in, they're gone. <laughs> yeah, that was hypothetical. Um, let me also show you this really quick, and then I'm done. Um, I just want to just emphasize how dire we are, what dire straits we're in right now. What? This is a Greenland ice melt since 1979. It's never melted this much this late. This is what's happening. If you can see the um, mean is uh, 1981 to 2010, that little section right here. This is where we're at in 2022. This is not good. Not good what at face, all. What Facebook page is this from? That's on my Facebook. Um, that was actually from the IPCC, I believe. Let me see here. Uh, that's from NASA, actually. I can put that link in the uh, chat. NASA has been uh, tracking that as well. So I'm going to put that in there. There you go. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. John Steiner. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, we've got to unmute you here. Hold on. I just sent you an email. We can talk about it afterwards, but just a heads up. Oh, OK. Thanks. Um, all right, you guys. It's another amazing two hours here that just flew right by. Um, uh, does anyone else have a, a last word? I just I just want to say for a future program, don't forget the only reason nuclear power exists is to create fissile material. And nobody really paid much attention when they put two trillion dollars to have a quote upgrade of our nuclear weapons uh, capability. It's not an upgrade. It's an entirely new high technology that nobody has to complete with AI. And so that needs to be explored. This is a peace issue as well. Absolutely, Ron Leonard. You should copy the chat. In the chat is what Harvey was talking about. There is a plan to install solar on two miles of uh, canal in California, which will save millions of gallons of water. And in fact, if we did this for all the canals, it would really power three quarters of California. And the funny little fact Boyd, is, there's this crazy guy in Washington, his name is Biden. He had the idea and uh, says we need to install six zero gigawatts of solar in a year every year to maintain greenhouse gases at present temperature rise we can do this uh, and we know we can do this because china this year has installed 100 gigawatts this is not a problem the money's there we can do this well on that happy note and, and it create thousands of jobs and stabilize the grid and all that great stuff and so, Sluggo, okay. everyone take a look at this chart. That's annual count of days averaging 
over 90 degrees since 1908 they've been tracking it look at how far off the chart we are in 2022 just over the last three years seems like we're in a feedback loop already and yep, nothing's coming actually, up too we and actually this, are yep it's really scary so and this coming year uh china is going to put a little over 20 trillion into renewables yes they're still burning coal though so they need to oh, knock that off yep yep uh, justin leblanc so uh, another thing that was mentioned by Ron Leonard about the money being there, a uh, specific detail is the Inflation Reduction Act includes provisions that take those tax credits for renewables and extend them to everybody. So even nonprofits, governments can take, care, take advantage of them and they can sell them to anybody who has an income tax liability whatsoever, including people who are working class. And so this nation could invest in itself nearly limitless to build renewables if we want to. Absolutely. All right, well, on that happy note, I thank you, uh, Mike Hurst and, and, and Steve Caruso for engineering with us. Uh, Wendy, Tatanka, Ron, everybody. Uh, Danette, uh, uh, thank you for um, uh, uh, Justin keeping up. And thank you, of course, to Jim Hightower. Next week, as I say, we'll have uh, um, uh, Keith Ellison with us. Uh, and uh, we will have uh, Miriam Williamson on a Sunday uh, later in September. All right, you guys, keep up, everybody. No nukes. And we'll see you next week. And please do call the CPUC and tell them to stop this insane tax on solar. Please. All right. The 15th. The 15th. No nukes. And we'll see you in Solartopia. Save the chat. Oh, yeah. Save the chat. Go ahead.